Hi there. Uh, today we're going to be drawing a rhinoceros. And I have this wonderful book on illustrations of different animals. And um, we're going to be drawing this, but profile. So as you can see, we're just doing more of a stylized rhinoceros with complementary colors, blue and orange, and we're doing a profile. But I wanted to give you a little bit of information, background on a rhinoceros. Um, they have more variation than the hippo. There are three major kinds of rhinoceros from Asia. Comes uh, the great Indian rhinoceros, um, and the um, black and white are somewhat misleading uh, designations. Both are nearly the same, brownish gray in color. Um, both are from Africa and have two horns. That's the one we're gonna be doing. Um, and the horns are not really bone parts of the skull, but consist congealed hair growing directly out of the skin. These horns, like people's fingernails, sometimes take on different shapes. The horns, um, and I'll show you other uh, drawings here, um, and six and seven, oh, I have to look for that. Um, there are different varieties, and they have unique sectional divisions um, of their hide. And um, as you can see, this one, the rhino's open mouth is not nearly the chasm of the hippo's. Um, the hippo can definitely open his mouth much wider. But here again um, is the, the drawing example of the black rhinoceros. His thick skin is looser than the hippo's. Um, but lack the heavy armor plate folds of the great Indian rhino. Uh, the head is relatively smaller, um, is held higher, and the upper lip is prehensile. And in this one, this is the right white rhinoceros. This huge juggernaut is second in size only to the elephant and land mammals. He has an extra hump in front of his shoulders and um, a long sloping forehead and he often carries his threatening horns very low to the ground while he walks or runs. His mouth is broadly built for hours of grazing on the grassy plains of Africa. The addition, additional arch in his spine is one mark of difference. All rhinos can travel, can travel um, at a surprising rate of speed for a short distance. It takes a good horse to overcome them. They progress by the walk, trot, and gallop. Okay, so um, also uh, for the um, rhino, um, there are three types in Southern Asia and two types native to Africa. They, um, for example, the white rhino can be up to 5,100 pounds. He can go up to 31 miles per hour. He can live up to 40 to 50 years. The gestation period can be 16 to 18 months. Their height can be 5.6 to 6 feet. The habitat depends on the species. For example, the Sumatran Rhino habitat is dense highland and subtropical -trop forests. Okay, so for this project, you're going to need, I have seven by 10 paper, mixed media paper. I um, have a pencil and eraser. I'm going to be using a skinny black razor tip Sharpie and watercolor paints. You're gonna need a nice brush. Um, I have this nice medium round brush and a cup of water and my reusable rag. So you're going to draw the rhinoceros in pencil first, um, and then you're going to trace with the marker. As you, I'm gonna be drawing to the side of my paper, kind of just at the mid 
range of the paper and then um, I'm going to start close to the edge and draw one of the ears, the inside of the ear, and as you can see, um, it looks like the shape of a leaf. And I'm using this very small illustration to go by. And then I'm just going to do the fold in the ear around the rhino's ears, very close to that inside part of the ear, and then just the um, two short lines coming down below that and a curve to complete it. So we're going to do just the top of the head where you make a curve line and you come down in a slope and then you're going to do a short line before we start the other ear. So do a short line going up um, at an angle and curve out and then go up a little bit more and then make a curve at the end of the ear come in and then do that short line for the rest of the ear make a curve at the base and then a short line coming down at an angle okay we're going to go just to the back of the head and uh, as you can see we're only doing the profile side view of the rhinoceros. Let's continue on to the first horn. And it, when you look at it, it kind of looks like the shape of a shark's tooth. Um, and then just make a curve at the very bottom part of the horn. And then we're gonna do the other horn just in front of it. And this horn is much taller. And as you can see, it kind of comes up at an angle and then starts to go towards the ears. And then you're going to make, uh, make sure it's tall enough. And then you're going to make a curve line for the rest of the horn coming down. So in looking at it, we want to make the horn at least the height of the second ear that we've drawn out and then you're going to make a curve at the bottom. Now actually, I'm gonna kind of take this down a little bit more, expand that, make it a little bit wider at the bottom. And then take a short line underneath the horn. So basically, this should be a little bit wider. So I'm extending that. I can't erase it, but I can go over it with color pencil or paint. Come down for the um, front part of the snout, make a little curve up, drop it down again, go up and make um, a dot at the end. And then the nostril kind of is wider in one part and then it tapers to the left side. Okay. I'm going to darken this just a little bit and then kind of make a small curve. And then do more detail once I um, start shading it. Okay, now we've got the bottom part of the head. You're going to do a short kind of line tilted up at a diagonal. And then this is going to go again, up again, almost like a plate on the rhinoceros's face. Curve, swoop down, curve, and then come down to the bottom. And then you can just do the neck just past this short line that's tilted up at an angle and then do the neck. So you can see it's very simple, not very, um, difficult. We're not doing the whole body. I'm going to curve for the top of the eye, short curve in the front. So a little line in the front and in the back and then curve under for the bottom of the eye. And then you're just going to do the pupil. Leave a little bit of white inside that pupil for the reflection of light. 
Okay, so when you're done with the basic outline, then what you're gonna do is hold it down, erase any pencil lines that exist after you're done. So it looks pretty flat right now until we actually get in with some of the shading and some of the folds on the face. Okay. Now, um, the background, we're gonna be painting in a bright orange. Have something underneath your, your art. I'm going to find this kind of bright reddish orange. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around with my watercolor around my rhinoceros. You want the color to be bold, so more paint on your brush than water, so it's nice and dark. Hold your brush properly when you're painting and you can move your paper in any direction. And use the tip of the brush to get in those difficult spaces. And then simply just start to paint the rest of your background. You may need to go over some of your paint if it's a little light. Remember, we want this to be bold and bright. So that means more paint than water. And you can see the difference. This has more paint than that has more water so just kind of go back over any areas that have gotten light and faded try to paint back and forth brush strokes. see it's easier when you've already painted around your rhinoceros to just then easily paint your background without interruption. Nice long strokes, even color. You might want to give it one more coat when you're finished.
Be mindful of your other hand, not putting it on your painting. Okay, then you're finished, let it dry. Before you start to paint your rhinoceros, make sure your brush is thoroughly clean. Wipe it off on your rag. And then we're gonna do this kind of sky blue. And we're gonna just paint. Now if it has too much water, dip it on your rag. And ideally you want your background to be um, dry before you start painting your rhinoceros so that the paint doesn't bleed into your background. And we're just gonna paint all of our rhinoceros blue. And then next time I see you, we're gonna be doing some shading and detail. So this will be part one of our rhinoceros profile. And you can go over the nostril. Just be careful not to go over the eye. You really don't need a lot of water on your brush. And it's important to use a Sharpie because again, if you use another kind of black marker that's not permanent, then you're gonna have a problem with the, the bleeding once there's water applied to your, um, to your area. Okay, so go over your background one more time. Um, give it another coat. You want a nice bright, um, background. You could also use tempera paint if you have a nice orange tempera. That would work too. Um, tempera to do your rhinoceros. That would be fine. So either tempera or watercolor will be just great. Okay, thank you and I will see you again next week.